understanding when I hear a song that talks about the Lord the simple truth of what my heart and soul depend on when I need to hear just who he is it's so easy to forget and be sometimes steer me wrong and when I choose a place where I need to be reminded so often I'm reminded by a song I love the songs of grace because I need it songs of mercy bless my soul because you showed it out to me Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians, if you will, chapter number 5, 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, if you would, this morning. The first thing I do when I wake up in the morning I look through my window at the light, and then I thank my God, who is up there in heaven, for blessing me through another night. Oh, how I love him. Oh, how I love him. Every hour watching over me, and if I tried to thank him for what he's done for me, then I'd be forever on my knees. The first thing I do when I come home in the evening, I sit and watch the sun fade away, and then I thank my God who was up there in heaven for guiding me through another day. Oh, how I love him. Oh, how I love him every hour watching over me and if i tried to thank him for what he's done for me then i'd be forever on my knees folks there's no truer thing than that right there we've got so much so much to be thankful for this morning, I want to just us to think along this lines. We've got so much to be thankful for. The Apostle Paul is writing 
the first grant or first Thessalonians chapter five, he bring that down to the very last hours, the last days of time, as was said in prayer a while ago, uh, it's later than most of us think. Uh, the hand on the clock is moving pretty fast. Uh, the other day, I guess it was last Sunday, that uh, the house, we had a clock that wasn't working right. And uh, Annie and I was sitting there looking at it, and uh, she got up and went over and got the clock and brought it off the wall and wound it up a little bit and got it right and fixed it. And, uh, but it's been running good ever since. She's pretty good clock watcher, a clock fixer, a uh, jelly bean eater, really. But, uh, uh, you know, sometimes it seems like God's clock has been going slow. People said for years, you know, where is his coming? You preachers been preaching on it for years, and yet we've never seen him. Well, my friends, it seems like the clock's been slow, but keep in mind, one day with the Lord is as a thousand years. The Lord's not late. He's still on time, and it's getting just about that time. But Paul writing concerning the last days, writing to the believers there at Corinth, and not only to those at Corinth, but to all believers. And I'm going to pick up here in just a, a few verses here in verse number 16, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and uh, verse number 16. Let's go back to verse 15. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good both among yourselves and to all men. Verse 16, rejoice evermore. Verse 17, pray without ceasing. Verse 18, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you and I. Uh, we find a number of things here which I won't go to. I, just, I want us to think about Thanksgiving. And you know, really, Thanksgiving isn't to really be a day. Now, we've set aside a day every year. And uh, that day we celebrate Thanksgiving, well, we used to. Uh, I'm not sure how much celebrating is done anymore, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, we got all the football games on, and, uh, and I'm not against football. Uh, uh, I used to uh, play some and watch some. Uh, but uh, we, we've got all of these other things that's going on. And to really stop and to rejoice and to thank God. Uh, you know, as a nation, we have much to be thankful for. I know it's not, as we've said so often, I know it's not what it ought to be. And, uh, but uh, I'd still rather be in America than anywhere else. I can't think of another place in this world that I'd rather be than here in the United States of America. But we have failed to remember uh, the things we have to be thankful for. But Thanksgiving is more than a day. Honestly, Thanksgiving is an attitude. It's not what we do one day a year. But it's the attitude to how our heart is every day of the year. And uh, uh, we need to have an attitude 
of thanksgiving. Uh, we need to be grateful for what the Lord hath given unto us. Now, these verses I read uh, show us here that if we are in the will of God, it, it, it will show us uh, some ways to tell if we're in the will of God. Number one, to be joyful always. Now, to be in the will of God is to be joyful at all times. Now, uh, we know that when hard times come, there's not too many people that's always uh, thankful. And when you hit your uh, finger with a hammer, I, I've never, I've heard people say a lot of things, but uh, never thankful. Uh, my wife and I was looking at something the other day, and it brought back from the years ago back home. Some of y'all remember, we'd have to chop the kindling and uh, had the little old hatchets or the big ha axes and all these things. I, and these are called antiques now. But uh, used to take them hatchet, you know. Whatever. But if, if, if you'd had to forget to move your finger, you remembered the next time because uh, it, it kind of helped you. But uh, uh, to be thankful, always to be joyful number two to pray continually if we are in god's will we will pray continually that does not mean you're going to pray 24 hours a day well it does not mean you're going to be on your knees 24 hours a day uh, but you'll be prayerful in a in a uh, uh, attitude of prayer. And by the way, no place that would ever say that you've got to be on your knees to pray. Uh, you can't find it. If you do, uh, I think you're looking in a different book. Uh, but uh, to be uh, in prayer continually and then to give thanks in all circumstances. And folks, that's hard many times. Uh, did you listen to the prayer request? Did you listen to what people's going through? I, I mean, sometimes the circumstances make life hard. If everything was always perfect, then it'd be good. But the fact is, uh, it's not that way. But to be thankful. Uh, but this morning, some things that we ought to be thankful for. I, and I just want to throw these at you and then get to my message. Number one, I think we ought to be thankful for Jesus. Think about it. You know, we come to him all the time in prayer. But how long has it been since you just thanked the Lord for himself? Uh, thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. But thank you, Lord, for being who you are. We ought to thank the Lord for Jesus. We ought to thank the Lord for the Holy Spirit of God. Uh, after all, he's closer to you than anyone. If you're saved, he lives within you. And we ought to thank the Lord for him. You see, he's the one that uh, living within us. He is the one that convicts us. I mean, uh, if you're saved and you're right with God, if you do something wrong, I'll guarantee you the Holy Spirit of God take his finger and point it at you. <laughs> I mean, Holy Spirit's got a big finger. And man, he'll, he'll, he'll put it right on you let you know that you're wrong. The Bible says to hide the word of God in the heart we might not sin against it. And when we do, the Holy Spirit just takes and tells us it's wrong. I mean, uh, say, uh, now I know none of y'all ever say a bad word or anything like that. But if, if you should happen to, as a child of God, I guarantee you the Holy Spirit will point it out to you. I, I mean, and he converts or convicts us and thank the Lord for what he's done. He's with us. By the way, if you're unsaved this morning, he, he's going to work on you that uh, and draw you to him. You see, he's the one that lets you know that you're a sinner. You and I think we're pretty good folks. But the Holy Spirit says, hold on. 
we're all safe. How's he do it? Through the word, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But the Holy Spirit points out, there was a day in my life I'd heard the truth many times, but it wasn't until that morning through the preaching of the Word of God that the Holy Spirit of God got a hold of my heart. And I mean, this like a drill bit almost. I mean, you know, really, really turn and, and uh, convicted me. And that's the morning. I didn't have no trouble. I didn't care what anyone else thought, anyone else seen, or anything else. All I wanted to do was get saved when the Lord spoke to my heart. I thank the Lord for the Holy Spirit. And I thank the Lord often and the Holy Spirit for uh, forgiving me for how often I fail them. But thank the Lord for the Holy Spirit. Thank the Lord for the gift of salvation. Amen. For salvation, you see, without his gift, you wouldn't be saved, and you would have no hope of an eternity in heaven. We ought to thank the Lord for the saints of God, for brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul, he was thankful for his Christian friends, and we ought to be thankful for our brothers and sisters in Christ. We ought to be thankful for our church. We ought to be thankful uh, that the Lord uh, uh, has allowed us to have church and to be able to come and join together. We ought to thank the Lord for his suffering, for uh, suffering. You know, we, none of us want to suffer, but those hours of suffering has what's brought you closer to the Lord than anything else. And may, we, we think more about the Lord when everything, when the times of suffering than we do when we're on the mountaintops. Uh, we ought to thank the Lord for his strength. Uh, his strength. Uh, Lord, I can do nothing without you, as the song says. We ought to thank the Lord for his strength. We ought to thank the Lord for our families. Right? Amen. We ought to thank the Lord for our families. You know, so many times we take our families for granted. Amen. We ought to thank the Lord for his grace. Amen for the grace of God, for that grace that he says is sufficient for all things. Thank God. You see, if I hadn't been for the Lord, you and I wouldn't have the hope for the future that we have today. Now, those are a lot of things and very, very important thing. Those are big things, but sometimes big things we don't think are too big. But my friend, they are. They are. This morning, Brother Gerald McCabe went home with the Lord. His son Larry said, it's just like Dad um, to get up and go early on Sunday morning. And uh, that uh, Brother Gerald did. He's home uh, with the Lord, the things that we take for granted, those that are now home for the Lord see how big they really are and how important. But in life, uh, we go through a lot of things. And this morning, I want us to see three things that I believe we ought to be thankful for. Number one, we ought to be thankful for the obvious things for the obvious things. Now, some things are so obvious, they are so close to us that we fail to give thanks for them. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 2, it says we give thanks to God always for you all. Someone said Paul was from down south. But for you all, if you will, making mention of you in our prayers. 
making mention of you in our prayers. The Apostle Paul says we are to remember. We are to remember your work. We are to remember your labor. And we are to remember your endurance. Paul here gives thanks to God. But at the same time, he's given thanks to those at Thessalonica, to those that was there with him. Uh, those that so often you take for granted. You remember when the Lord healed the lepers there in uh, Luke 17, the 10 lepers, but yet there was only one that returned to give thanks. Uh, uh, and that, he, he was a, a, a Samaritan. He was one that wasn't very highly thought of. But this man knew that it was right uh, uh, to give thanks. And he returned to thank the Lord. How often do you return to the Lord and thank him for all he's done for you and I? We ought to give him thanks. We find to thank the Lord for the obvious things. Often people look past the blessings that we have, the things that are so close to us. So often we uh, look past the family, maybe the wife who loves so much, the one who cares so much, the one who cares for our families and our children and the house. Maybe, maybe even we fail to uh, uh, thank the husband or not who cares enough to supply all of our needs. You know, so many times we're so close, we fail to just stop and thank you and to say thank you, Lord, for those. Uh, maybe it's for the friend, uh, you know, that helps you in, in the time of need. We fail to stop and say, thank you. Maybe it's for the food and the shelter and the clothing that God has provided. Amen. Sometimes we fail to stop and say, thank you. You see, these are things that we take for granted, things that we don't really think much about because uh, they're so close, they're so obvious, and, and things that are so obvious we forget to give thanks for so often. In the book of Psalm 103, verse 2 says, Bless, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Thank God. Thank God for all the benefits. And you know, as Christians, we have so many benefits. We have so many. You ever think about uh, what the Lord has given you, has given us? You ever think about your body? You know, uh, I was just thinking, you know, Marjorie talking about her uh, brother-in-law just had the stroke and different one of you have got different ones that are sick. Jerry Roth, they're in, out of the hospital and, uh, 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 Logan uh, been through round after round of uh, chemo, a young 19, 20 year old boy, and now facing major surgery. Think of little Michael Hanna, just a little three year old boy with the cancer and all. Uh, we, when these times come, we, we see and think of it. But do you ever really stop and just thank the Lord for your body? Do you ever just stop and thank the Lord for your eyesight? We take it for granted, don't we? We take it for granted. They say that it's been estimated that a most, the most powerful computer 
They say it would take that computer, and I, I, I don't know this, you know that. I, I'm just reading what statistics and all say, that it would take a hundred years for that most powerful uh, computer to reproduce what takes place in your eyes many times every second. Every second. I mean, these, these eyes, these uh, eyes are some, uh, what about your nose? <laughs> you ever think about your nose? Man, I do, I walk in my house and my wife's got cornbread and beans cooking. Oh, I, I thank the Lord for my nose then. But did you ever thank the Lord for the way he made your nose? Did you ever, you ever stop and think about it? If the Lord had put your nose on upside down, every time you sneezed, you blow your hat off. <laughs> if it had been the other way, um, I mean, uh, if it had been upside down too, every time it rained, you drowned. I mean, the Lord's got everything just in the right order. You ever thank God for your mouth hmm, to be able to... Uh, uh, and, and use it in the right way. It can be used in all ways. But um, the mouth to eat and to taste and so forth for your hands. Uh, uh, we take them for granted, don't we? Uh, for our arms, our, our, our feet. Uh, for this body that is fearfully and wonderfully made, do we thank God for it? Do we thank God we need to? Do, do you take time to give thanks for people who do something for you? Amen. Just stop and thank people. It used to be, it seemed like that we was more thankful in the age we're living now, it seems like we take everything for granted. Someone does something good for you, do you see to it that you thank them for it? Uh, someone gives you a gift, do you thank them for it? Uh, uh, this, this year, uh, I don't know how many uh, invitations we get to all kinds of things, which we haven't been able to make and all, but uh, usually, uh, almost without exception, my wife and I will send a gift. And uh, used to be, if you did, you, you know, people would return thanks. This year, uh, I'm not saying how many were sent out, that don't matter, but I think one wrote back, and said thank you. I, I mean, we're not, we're not thankful anymore. Someone cares, be thankful. Uh, someone said, well, they, they put it on Facebook. Well, big deal, everybody don't on Facebook. Uh, you know, they send out invitations personally now I'm getting on a pet peeve, I guess. Uh, maybe I'll go ahead. But they'll send out invitations personally, and then the thanks they put on there where people don't even see it. I mean, we ought to be thankful enough to let people know. Make a phone call. Call someone. Lord, put some on your mind. Just call. Brother Gerald just died about a week ago. The Lord put him on my heart. I told my wife, I send, said, send Brother McCabe and his wife a card and just let them know we appreciate them. And he probably got that the day before, the day before that he came down with the stroke. Uh, let people know. Let people know you care. Uh, let people know you appreciate them. Uh, remember, Thanksgiving isn't a day, it's an attitude that we ought to be thankful for. And then we ought to give thanks to all things that are obvious, but also in all circumstances. 
uh, give things. Uh, 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 Philippians 4, uh, 8 says, Finally, brethren, uh, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Sometimes it take and be good for us to stop and to think about some of these things. Think about things and that are good and uh, things that go beyond our everyday regularities, if you will. And we ought to give thanks for these things, for things that are true. We ought to give thanks not only uh, the speaking, uh, and, and by the way, the Bible teaches that we ought to speak the truth, uh, but we ought to give thanks for uh, the, the things in life that are lasting, uh, uh, things that aren't here today and gone tomorrow. Some things don't matter much. I mean, uh, uh, they just don't matter. Uh, the other day, my wife was trying to figure out what to eat, and uh, I told her, I said, it don't really matter. If the food's no good, we got some peanut butter. And so, uh, you know, we're, we're satisfied that way. It was good. I'm not saying that. But, I mean, uh, we've got so much we need to be thankful for. For your marriage, if you're blessed to have a good marriage, you ought to thank God, and you ought to thank your mate. We ought to be thankful. We ought to be thankful for this. Um, for people who are nice to you, if you will, people who are level. You ever notice it's easy for people to tell you when you do something wrong? I mean, man, everybody will let you know when you do something wrong. But, you know, we ought to thank people for being lovable. People that are lovely. Thank God for them. Uh, 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 just think of a, a few things, if you will. Uh, thank God that he gave us the ability to, and the health to get up and get out of bed this morning. I mean, that's, that, that wasn't the God of Moses' day. That was the God of your day and my day. He allowed us to get up and get out of bed this morning. Uh, he gave you safety traveling here today and pray that he will go home. A young man that sat where you sat, some of you, was killed in an automobile accident Friday, I believe it was. I just talked to him a few days before that. Uh, but these are things that we, I mean, this traveling mercies that the Lord gives us. Um, for the food, God supply. Like I say, it may have been wrong, but if if my wife had it full up, she didn't. But we, we got three or four jars of peanut butter. We just make sure all the time. If, if all the meals are bad, we always got peanut butter to go to, you know. But I mean, uh, ever thank God for the food you have. Um, um, thank God that um, that he allows us to work, that we may have the paychecks. Yeah. Or if you own Social Security, uh, do you ever thank God? Uh, do you for these? Uh, thank God that uh, he lets us enjoy our, our family and enjoy our friends, enjoy our church. Yeah. My, I, I thank God daily for you folks. Uh, seldom a day goes by that each of his name not called out in prayer. I thank God for you uh, more than you'll ever know. And thank God for his word. We talk about believing uh, the book from cover to cover and talk about uh, how much we believe in whom we ought to, but uh, how much of it do we take time to listen to or to read? 
How, how many times do we thank God for his word? Have you thanked God? And we should, that he answers our prayers today. <laughs> Most of us, we ask God, and then when God blesses, we forget to thank him for it. I, I got to sneak out there. Most of you just ask God to help you through the day. But I wonder when we come to lay our head on the pillows at night, if we stop and say, Lord, I sure do thank you. <laughs> Lord, I thank you. So we need to be a thankful people. And if we would do as the song says and count our blessings, uh, we would find out that we could never run out of things to be thankful for. I mean, as the song said, Lord, if I thanked you for all things, I'd never get off my knees. I mean, the Lord has been so good to us. But then also, we ought to be thankful in all circumstances. Now, this is a little bit harder. The Apostle Paul says that in all things and all times we give thanks. But uh, he says give thanks in all circumstances, but he did not say give thanks for all circumstances. There's a big difference in and for. Uh, we can thank God uh, for him. Uh, there's, a, there's a big difference between the two. You see, even in the worst situations of life, we can thank God. No matter what it is, we can thank God. You know, we can even thank God for the COVID. You know why? <laughs> because it will pass. It will pass. We can thank God for polio. Some of you remember, we didn't have all the uh, media and Facebook and what do you call all that stuff. Uh, sorry, you all's out there. Uh, but I mean, I don't know what it is. But uh, in those days, we didn't have all of that. So you never knew what was going on down the road and in the next state and all. But my friends, one thing about it, no matter what the situation is, in time it too will pass. So we can thank God uh, for those situations if you will. And then we can thank God for his presence in those situations, his presence in those circumstances. You know what? In 2020, 2021, God was with us just as much as he was in 2015 or whatever year you want. God is still the same at all times. Now, we can thank him uh, even in the times of uh, terrible, terrible situations. But you see, it's in circumstances that God does work. It's in circumstances that God works. Some of you have heard the name of Corey Ten Boom. Uh, and uh, her family, they lived through the Nazi Holocaust. And uh, they took and hid Jewish people in their home uh, who otherwise would have been killed. But then, as time would have it and life would have it, she herself was placed in a Nazi prison camp and a camp that was... Uh, as a flea, uh, a flea-ridden uh, place, a terrible place that she said she could not stand, and, but they'd been placed there. One day her older sister by the name of Betty said to her, Sis, I found something in the Bible that will help us. The Bible says in in all things, give thanks. Said Corey, looked at her and said, but I can't give thanks for these fleas. Betty said to her, give thanks that we're together. Most families have been split up. And Corey said, yes, I can do that. Her sister continued, 
So give always thanks that somehow the guards didn't check out our belongings and take our Bibles. She said, I can give thanks for that. But Corey said this, I cannot give thanks for the fleas where the Lord has put us. Some of these have read the books. Later they found out that the only reason they were not harmed, were not molested, was because of the place they was flee uh, infected that the guards would not go in that place. You see, sometimes you even thank God for the fleas. May may be in terrible times, terrible situations, but you see, God was protecting them in those circumstances. Child of God, we got a lot to be thankful. Remember old Joseph back here in Genesis? It was Joseph who'd been mistreated and everything else. Who'd been sold into slavery and really they wanted to kill him. But Joseph said this to his brethren You meant this to be for evil, but God meant it for good. Think about that. They meant it for bad, God meant it for good. Sometimes the circumstances we're in may seem to be bad but like Joseph he knew that it was in the power of God to bring good out of what was meant to be evil my friends we ought to thank God for our circumstances for the circumstances in our life for those circumstances have you given thanks to God have you ever stopped and think how you come to the place you are today? All oh, the circumstances. You know, most of you wouldn't have been saved if everything had been perfect. Greatest revivals America's ever had was during the depression times, was during the time, the hard times. We have people today praying for America, pray for America to become the nation that she once was, but we don't pray much that God take away all the pleasures. <laughs> we don't pray that God would put us back in those circumstances. It's like praying for patience, but God give it to me now. So much to be thankful for. The little song, the little chorus you've heard so many times. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. We've got plenty. We've got plenty. Thank the Lord for the Lord. Thank Him for the Holy Spirit. Thank Him for the greatest gift of all, the gift of salvation. And then thank Him for those obvious things. Thank you, Lord, that I still have hands. I still have how many of y'all got your hands here this way? You're blessed. My brother back here don't have all the fingers you got. What do you say, preacher? Who be lost one while in service? Count his fingers, you'll know. He don't have as many as you got. Little things that we don't think much about. Have you thanked God? We need to. We need to thank him for that gift of salvation. 
we need to thank him for one another. I thank God for you folks. Mm. He's one of you. This Thanksgiving, let's don't let it be Thursday. The calendar says Thursday. But you know what? It ought to be every day. Look at your wife, your husband, your children, your parents. By the way, I'll preach more on this tonight. I'm just getting started. Uh, we got so much to be thankful for. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, you got a lot to be thankful for because you can be saved today. This is the day of salvation. In Christians, child of God, you've been saved. But have you stopped taking time to simply thank God for what he's done for you? And we're going to stand. The pian's going to play.